Hey, this is Robert Knighty, your Spray Foam Advisor. And today I want to talk about storage, specifically storage temperature, what temperature you're keeping your drums at, your chemical at, because temperature, obviously, we all know is a very important part of the spray foam process. And storage temperature can be very critical, especially as temperature throughout the year starts to shift and change. If you're not paying attention to the storage temperature of your drums, you could run into some significant issues and some processing issues. So first, with open cell foams, we generally want to see temperatures above 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And then with closed cell foam, there's a tighter window. We want to see temperatures generally around 60 to maybe uh, no more than 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's probably somewhere in the 60 to 85 degree Fahrenheit range is optimum for uh, your closed cell foams. While open cell foams, your manufacturers are generally going to say above 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember that the colder any liquid material is, the more viscous it is. And what does that mean? It means that the material is thicker. And when the material is thicker, it's much more difficult for your drum pumps to draw the material from the drum and move it down the chemical lines to your proportioning pump. So the thicker, the colder your material, the thicker it is, the more difficult it is for your pumps to do the work necessary to get that material into the machine. So how can you combat this? Identify the optimum temperature range for your materials based on the manufacturer's recommendations, and then create a plan internally to maintain those drums at that temperature for as long as possible. So ideally, when you're taking material out of inventory and putting it on a truck, and you're taking that truck out to a job site, that material has been maintained within that optimum temperature range. It's been stored in that optimum temperature range and as close to possible at the processing temperature that you're targeting for. That's the plan. That's the goal here. Because if we can precondition the material and make sure that it's at a, the optimum temperature from a storage standpoint, then we can mitigate a lot of problems. For example, when material gets too cold, it can freeze. Your resin can freeze. Your ISO doesn't quite freeze, but it does something very similar called dimerize, and it creates little dimers where the ISO um, molecules attach together, and it creates crystals inside your drums. So that it's not exactly freezing, but it does create crystals inside the ISO drum and can cause problems. So if it gets too cold, if it freezes, you can ruin your material. If you have material that gets close to freezing, if you think you've frozen material, the best thing to do is contact your manufacturer to find out if there are any potential steps to salvage the material. What I've heard from manufacturers, some of them say yes, there are ways you can salvage the material, and others say no, there's not really there's not much you can do. It's it's kind of, you know, it is what it is. There's no way to reverse that process. Talk to the manufacturers about the specific product you're working with. They can give you the best guidance on what happens if you freeze the material. What's the best way to handle this? Don't let your material freeze. Make sure you have a storage temperature process, some way to keep the material in optimum range before you put it on the truck. Now, once you put the material on the truck, you have to make sure that the truck has some type of temperature control management so that you can actually maintain temperatures close to your optimum temperature range so that you don't have a dip in temperature and potentially freeze material on the truck itself. Now, when we're talking about drum temperature, it's very important to realize what we're actually talking about is the temperature of the chemical in the drum. We are not talking about the temperature of the drum itself. It's all about the chemical in the drum. The goal is that the chemical has to be heated to a certain point so that it can then be sprayed through the gun in an optimum way, right? So it doesn't matter if the drum itself is warm, if the chemical is not yet warm, that's not acceptable. You have to continue warming it in the environment. The best way to do that is to leave the drum in an environment where it maintains a constant temperature. Therefore, the drum will be about the same temperature as the liquid inside, and you're fine to go. But make sure you're measuring the chemical temperature and not the outside of the drum temperature. Yes, this happens. Somebody puts a heater up next to the drum to help warm up the drum and heat up the area around it, and then they come over and use an infrared gun to read the temperature of the metal drum 
that's six inches away from the heater that's sitting right next to it. Guess what? The metal's going to be hot. Guess what? The metal's going to be a lot hotter than the chemical that's in the drum. Don't measure your drum temperature. Measure the chemical temperature inside the drum. You want to measure the chemical. That's the temperature that's most important. Keep in mind that a lot of the pieces of equipment on the market have a maximum delta T that they will achieve when the chemical goes across the heating coils, across the heating elements in the, in the, in the machine itself. So if you're processing on smaller equipment with smaller heaters, you're, you may only have a 20 degree, 30 degree um, maximum potential raise in temperature that you can achieve on a smaller machine with smaller heaters. Some of the bigger machines with the bigger heaters, um, those can achieve a bigger delta T across the heating uh, rods, across those heaters. But you should check the wattage of the heaters that you're working with, talk to the equipment manufacturers and find out what type of delta T you can expect when the chemical goes across those heaters. Now what am I talking about? If you're inputting material at 80 degrees Fahrenheit into the equipment, into the machine, and you have your equipment set at 160, the heaters are set at 160, you're not going to get 160 degree material out the machine. It can't do that. The material's not in there long enough, there's not enough dwell time on the heaters for the liquid to come out 80 degrees different, to go from 80 degrees Fahrenheit to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So you have to figure out, based on the dwell time of the equipment, based on how long the chemical is going to sit in the machine, what is the anticipated raise in temperature that you're going to see in your equipment. So those are some concepts, those are some guidelines to think about when you're working with your chemical temperatures and working with your drum temperatures. Make sure that you're storing your drums in a good place so that you have a workable chemical on your trucks and on your job sites. Otherwise, you could run into some issues and it could be related to the storage process you're using for your drums. This has been Robert Nani with Spray Foam Advisor. Thanks for checking us out. Catch us on some more videos. I love questions. Anyone out there, feel free to shoot in a question. I'll give you a, uh, an email address right here for any questions you have. Send them to questions at sprayfoamadvisor.com. Sprayfoamadvisorsingular.com. So questions at sprayfoamadvisor.com. Go ahead and send those questions in. I'll get to as many of them as I can, and I'll, I'll try to incorporate a select few into some of my uh, weekly videos. And of course, uh, if you like this uh, video, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the blog if you haven't already done that. Find us on YouTube and uh, like us, uh, like and follow us there. And uh, check us out on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, find us on all of your favorite social media sites, and uh, you can keep up with the words of wisdom coming out of Spray Foam Advisor. Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. We'll catch you on some more videos. Take care.